So text uh, five. Kamo manyar mado loba. Kamo manyar mado loba. Shok moha bhaya daya. Shok moha bhaya Karma bandhashta yan mula. Karma bandhashta yan mula. Sri kuriyat ko nutad buddha. The mind is the root cause of lust, anger, pride, greed, lamentations, illusion, and fear. Combined, these constitute bondage to spiritual activity. What learned man would put faith in the mind? But what? The mind is the original cause of material bodies. It is followed by many enemies such as anger, pride, greed, lamentation, illusion, and fear. The best way to control the mind is to engage it always in Krishna consciousness. Sahavaimana, Krishna Padabadi. Since the followers of the mind bring about material bondage. We would be very careful not to trust the mind. Hare Krishna. So, in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying that mind is the greatest friend of one who has controlled the mind. Mind is the greatest friend, and one who is not controlled, mind is the greatest enemy. Bandhur Atmanas Tasya Yenat Maiva Atmana Jita Anatmanas to Shatrutre Vartet Atmaeva Shatru Vart. For him who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends, but for one who has failed to do so, his very mind will be the greatest enemy. And the whole process of this Ashtang Yoga is actually to control the mind. As we have discussed previously, also, mind is the seat of all desires. Mind is where the desires are created. So, <clears throat> If if the mind is and also as it is mentioned, you know, in sixth chapter only, Pramathi Balvadram, it is mad, it is obstinate, and it's very powerful. So if the mind somehow or the other becomes uncontrolled, the living entity will fall into the deepest of hells. Think of it this way. You know, there are these worms crawling in the gutters, there are pigs eating stool, there are bacteria and viruses. What sane living entity would want to have a life like that? If someone comes to a human being and says, sir, would you like to live like a pig? The man would laugh. The man would think that this questioner is crazy. But this is precisely what the human society is doing. Because mind tricks us into accepting everything as a source of pleasure. You know, if you go to, like in, in Bombay, if you see this, uh, if you go to places like Dharavi, Kula West and all, they're like hell on earth. Extremely, you know, noisy, dirty, dangerous, and yet people are happily living there. Some of those people are millionaires. They can very easily afford to move away and live some peaceful life. But they won't do that. Because the mind tricks them into believing that this is happiness. It is the mind which tricks a human being into believing that his own suffering is actually happiness. Like the uh, camel. The camel eats his own blood. When he is chewing these thorny bushes, his own blood leaks from the tongue. And he thinks that it is very tasty. So in the same way, the living entity, the human being, he is shedding his own blood. You know, when he's trying to enjoy the senses. Like imagine someone wants to drive a sports car. A sports car would be in like you know, $100,000. To buy a car so expensive, one has to work hard day and night. And then somehow or the other, he's able to buy the car. And the car will take petrol. It would require maintenance of thousands of dollars. And the man will work still harder to, you know, to spend that money. And he'll get just some, some hours of enjoyment driving this car around. Otherwise, he would be bored of it. But he would still convince himself that this is happiness. So this is the nature of mind. It convinces us that the very misery that we are experiencing is actually happiness. So therefore, a yogi who has controlled the mind, he knows what uncontrolled mind is, mind is capable of. Therefore, he does not trust the mind. Now, suppose you go to a shop and the shopkeeper cheats you. But next time you have to go with him to buy something from him, would you trust him? 
so you'll be very strict you'll say okay i only want i'm paying so much you must give me only so much and then you will check whatever he has given so therefore a yogi also once he has subdued the mind he would make sure that the mind is again not uncontrolled un uncontrolled and again not falling into the tricks of the maya hari krishna yeah any questions hari krishna boys dev program yes program so we controlling your mind as you in hari yoga How long we can do that? We take a posture and it is Bhagavad Gita. We go sit down and neck straight and all that. But how long it will be there? And what happens after? After you do Ashtanga Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga takes about thirty, forty thousand years. You see, in Ashivan Bhagavatam, it takes around at least ten thousand years. So that will be the position. Anyway, the ten thousand years I don't know, but what? Hmm. When I want to control my mind, hmm. do so, I do a sound? So here is mentioned. Hour, here, you know, no, no, that is nonsense. That yoga is nonsense. All that Baba Ramdev and all that stuff is nonsense. That is not true yoga. Yeah. Yoga means complete yoga, twenty-four hours. Not that one hour in the morning. Then I drive a car. Then I watch some TV. No, yoga so means twenty-four hours. Of a person, that is what they have. How many hmm. are, are there who can do twenty-four hours? Yes. Then what? Hardly do? anyone. Kalyu gets impossible. Then we cannot control the mind. Also. Yeah, so we can control the mind. Here it is written. You know, the best way to control the mind is to engage it always in Krishna consciousness. Savaya mana Krishna padaravinda yo. Always think of Krishna. You know, man mana bhav mad bhakto mad yaji maam namaskuru. So always think of Krishna. Remember him. Offer your obeisances to him. Worship him. Okay. So that is one thing. Then also Mahaprabhu himself says, "Grahe rahi Krishna naam nirantar laiva." So in Gaudiya Mart, Brahmas are supposed to chant 64 rounds daily. That is roughly eight hours. So if you are working eight hours, then around 16. So you have like maybe four, eight hours left for so eight hours of chanting, eight hours of working. That leaves you with only eight hours. So that is for all the other activities: sleeping, eating, bathing, washing, everything. So that's how Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Thakur. Prescribed for grahasthas. So Shila Prabhupada has made it 16 rounds, so that is fine. For 16 rounds of chanting, then we must read books, and the chanting has to be quality chanting. So then we should read books. We should be, we should be preaching. We should be taking trouble for Krishna. We take so much of trouble for daughter, for son, for for house, for society, but we don't want to take any trouble for Krishna. We want Krishna was served on a platter. Bhakti we want very easily. Okay, so and so Prabhu has organized a program. So and so Prabhu will come and speak. I will go there. I will sing. I will sleep during the lecture. Then I will eat something. Then I will come home. That's not the way to get Krishna. Yes. So when Shiva Bhagavatam was spoken, it was seven days and seven nights. Nobody took a break. There were thousands of people there, thousands of sages and saintly souls, and they were all hearing, twenty-four by seven, and they heard it. That's literally twenty-four by seven. So they heard it, and then they all became self-realized. Those who are not already. So that's the way to realize Krishna. Savai mana Krishna padar vinda yo. So this verse, if we see in from Shrimad Bhagavatam, so he 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 put his mind on the he fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. He used his eyes to look at the beautiful forms of the deities. He used his hands to clean the temple of the Lord. He used tongue. To taste the tulsi offered to the lotus feet of the Lord, he used his uh, body to embrace the devotees. He used his legs to travel to the places of the Lord. He used his hearing power only to hear the glories of the Lord. He used his power of speech to only glorify the Lord. So that is twenty-four hour Krishna kirtan. Then one can control the mind. Then one is a yogi. So that is the process of complete mind control. But then I agree. If we can concentrate on Krishna, and mm. then mind remains. Ah. Even one remains mm. under control, and mm. I quite agree. Yeah, and also like uh, we have to follow the instructions of Shri Rupa Goswami also. Atyahara prayashascha. Yes, sir. Uh, Prajalpo niyama agraha. Jan sangasya lawyam cha shatbir bhakti pranashti. So the six items we have discussed already also. 
so those also have to be followed so especially the problem is atyahar and prayas we take too much and we work too hard to take it then uh, jan, uh, you know uh, prajalpo niyam agraha prajalpa unnecessary talking even devotees like it's very sad when devotees are talking about politics and other things because that's not our job at all the politicians can handle politics well enough so politics and also all this is nonsense prajalpa prajalpa that has no meaning you know it's just talk which just you know takes away our mind from krishna so it changes our feelings bhav or bhav changes so prajalpa niyam agraha following rules and regulations only for the name sake or not following them at all so both are dangerous so like when we sing sansar davanal do we really think or do we even sing sansar davanal every morning do we think what is the meaning here what exactly is uh, spoken by shana chakravarti thakur or we sing guru puja so those things you know we have to meditate we should not just sing okay sansara davana lali dho ka tarana ya karunya kana ghana ghana to no we must know the words also we must try to understand what the verses are singing we should sing it with feelings by glorifying the acharya in front of the deities so we should sing with that thought so that is niyamagra you know if we don't put our thoughts into following the rules so niyamagra then then jan sangasya lolyam cha associating with worldly minded people unnecessary people you know we, we we should not associate with anybody else who is not really a devotee minimum association of course we need to go to market to buy something so we need to talk to sabji wala fruit wala that's all okay but a no unnecessary association that you know we we spend time with such people we are you know we are intimate with them that is jan sangha because our minds become contaminated <clears throat> then lolyam too much of greed today i have this much tomorrow i'll have that much i'll use it in service of krishna no 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 it's all right krishna doesn't want that krishna just wants you so so these are some items so these also have to be followed otherwise mind will not be controlled shila rupa goswami is mentioning these items because they distract our mind they disturb us therefore we have to be careful thank you that's it वेश भाषा चरितैर अविलक्षित भगवत प्रभावो योगिनाम सांपराय वेश भाषा चरितैर अविलक्षित भगवत प्रभावो योगिनाम सांपराय विधिम विधु विधिम अनुशिक्षयन स्वकलेवरम जिहासो रात्मन्य आत्मानम उपरराम प्रभुपाद जी की जयलेशन Lord Rishabh Dev was the head of all kings and emperors within this universe. But assuming the dress and language of an avadhuta, he acted as if dull and materially bound. Consequently, no one could observe his divine opulence. He adopted this behavior just to teach yogis how to give up the body. Nonetheless, he maintained his original position as a plenary expansion of Lord Rish- Vasudev Krishna. remaining always in that state he gave up his past times as lord rishabh they within the material world if following in the footsteps of lord rishabh they one can give up his subtle body 
there is no chance that one will accept the material body again or put as lord krishna says in bhagavad gita 4.9 janma karmi cha me divyam evam yo veti tatvata tva katva deham punar janma neti mam eti so arjuna one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities do not upon leaving the body take this take his birth again in the material world but attains my eternal abode or arjuna this is possible simply by keeping oneself an eternal servant of the supreme lord one must must understand his constitutional position and the constitutional position of the supreme lord as well both have spiritual same spiritual identity maintaining oneself as a servant of supreme lord one should avoid a rebirth in this material world if one keeps himself spiritually fit and thinks of himself as an eternal servant of the supreme lord he will be successful at the time he has to give up the material body thank you ji hari krishna hari krishna thank you very much avatar nahi kahe ami avatar muni sab jani kare lakshana vichar so an actual incarnation of god never says i am god or i am an incarnation of god the great sage vyasadeva knowing all has already recorded the characteristics of avatars in the shastra see we we talk so much about the principle of humility we talk so much about you know being humble and prideless actually this is coming from the lord the lord likes humility because the lord himself is humble he is the owner of everything aham sarvasya prabhava mattah sarvam pravartate the lord aham bija pradapita he is the father he is a seed giving father he literally he owns everything so if the lord is arrogant and rude it doesn't matter because it everything belongs to him but the lord is still humble he doesn't like to advertise his position lord ram lord ram acted like an ordinary man lord krishna he also lived like an ordinary man the brajwasis didn't know he was the supreme lord neither did kings like jarasandh or duryodhan or kans nobody really considered him divine only the great sages only the great sage vyasadev the pandavas only a few handful of people knew that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead the supreme absolute truth so <clears throat> the lord when he moves in this world no one can identify him so when krishna was here he, nobody could identify him when ram came not many people were aware that he is the lord so that is the position of the lord lord never advertises himself but the great sage vyasadev knows who is the lord when is he going to appear and what will be his activities so so that's the way maharaj rishabdev lived even though he was the king of all kings he lived like an ordinary materialistic person so he adopted this behavior just to teach yogis how to give up the body see the lord has no really no duty in this world krishna is saying in the bhagavad gita that i have no duties but i just perform them as a matter of religion for if i fail to do my duties all the world would be put to ruination so krishna is saying that so krishna sets his own example so here maharaj rishabdev is setting an example for the yogis how to become detached from material consciousness so it's not just the body but it's giving up the consciousness then one can give up the body so like you know like this is sanyas means death before death it's a social suicide what it means is that a person is now giving up all false ego sanyasi gives up his brahmanical uh, you know this thing his brahmanical designation also a sanyasi is simply a sanyasi because sanyasi means that he is giving up all designations related to this particular body so rishabdev lived like that so if following in the footsteps of lord rishabdev one can give up his subtle body then there is no chance one will accept a material body again so what does this statement really mean giving up one subtle body means giving up ahankar the conception of aham mameti the concept of i and mine because in this material world we are we attach ourselves to the material world the material energy is not binding us we are binding ourselves with this material energy by this misconception that i am this body 
and all the paraphernalia associated with this body is me as well. So therefore, at the time of death, we are attached to so many materialistic uh, paraphernalia that we are not able to give up this body. And then, because we are not able to give up this body, we continue our existence in another material body where all the same conditionings come back to us. So a yogi tries to give up all kinds of conditionings before going back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Any questions? Hare Krishna, Guruji. Yes. Prabhuji, here the sentence is, one must understand his constitutional position and the constitutional position of the Supreme Lord as well. Hmm. So this sentence, actually, this instruction of Prabhupada gets repeated multiple times in Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. So does that, theoretically, we, we are understanding. The, the hmm. Prabhupada is referring to the realizations that eventually those realizations will become stronger and stronger and will get to understand the Supreme Lord. See, a message is repeated so that the listener can understand it. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that please try to understand you are a servant of Krishna. Mm -hmm. You are not this body. Your job is to serve Krishna. The job is not to enjoy this material world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here so Prabhupada the... is also saying if one keeps himself spiritually fit, spiritually mm -hmm. fit, like mind control. Huh? Control your mind, control mm -hmm. your senses. Mm -hmm. Don't get into materialistic talks. You know, that's the point. Don't get consumed by materialistic consciousness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my house, my job, my profession, I am so big. Mm -hmm. so give up all those materialistic thoughts. <coughs> and one, one other thing. So this this question now might sound very stupid, but so Rishab Devji is like in, in a, is an incarnation of God. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he himself is God. You know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu being merciful, he came here and in ecstasy, he's falling here and there. Same way, uh, Rishab Dev, we have seen how hard of a tapasya he has done to teach us. Why such a... Mm -hmm. Why such a bitter or painful experience on the body? Ah. So that you realize that you are not this body. So that you give up all the attachments to the body. See, what is Krishna saying? Maam upetya punar janma dukhalayam ashashvatam napnuvanti mahatmana samsiddhim paramam gata So Krishna is saying dukhalayam ashashvatam This material world is not a place fit for a gentle man. This is mm -hmm. how Sarasati Thakur used to say. So, if you are still attached to the bodily conception of I and mind, how will you ever realize this material world is miserable? So, you mm -hmm. voluntarily accept miseries. Whether a man dies or whether he is killed is the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, one may become a sannyasi, wander in the forest, not take care of the body and eventually body would just wither away and die. That is also one death. Another one is one stays at home under the shelter of his wife and children and then he takes all medications and diet and everything. And eventually he dies kicking and shouting. Mm -hmm. Because death is going to come. So whose death is more glorious here? The one who left on his own. Yes. So one who has died before death is a liberated soul. Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma Na Shochati Na Kamshati See, neither mm -hmm. lamenting nor is he desiring. That's a glorious death. Sometimes it's just hard to... Uh, this could be taken to an extreme because things are going to happen on its own. But then yeah. we lack relating Krishna and bringing Krishna into the picture. So you have to do devotional service. You're not mm -hmm. just going to sit idle. That's Tamoguna. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then you'll become an animal. <laughs> mm -hmm. In this life itself and in the next one also. Mm. what we mean is that you shouldn't be acting on the material platform. See, yes. think of it this way, that you are employed by Krishna in this material world. Mm -hmm. Your job is to learn what is Krishna consciousness and then it is to preach to others. Mm -hmm. That is your job. You may be a manager or a doctor or whatever, but your job really is not that. Your job is to serve mm -hmm. Krishna. Mm -hmm. If you do that duty, then you are already liberated. If you don't do that duty, then you are already bound. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Not that we have to sit inactively. Krishna has advised like mm-hmm. four fifth chapters we have studied in Bhagavad Gita, talking the same thing. That mm-hmm. uh, true yogi is someone who works actively, not one who lights no fire or does no work. Mm-hmm. Yogi has to work. Yogi works for Krishna. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, what is the meaning of yoga? Yes. Yoga with what? There is no void. There is Krishna mm-hmm. and there is material world. All the center of all, all the instructions Prabhupada is giving comes normally again and again to we need to bring Krishna to center of every single thing. Absolutely, because mm-hmm. Krishna is the very purpose of our life. Mm-hmm. Our real job is to serve Krishna. Mm-hmm. If we are not doing that, then we are an illusion. Then we are mm-hmm. really getting into trouble. Mm-hmm. So, twenty-four hours we should be serving Krishna. Mm. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Text 7. Tasya hava evam mukta lingasya bhagavata rishabhasya yoga maya. Tasya hava evam mukta lingasya bhagavata rishabhasya yoga maya. Yoga maya. Vasanaya deha imam jagatim abhimana bhasena sankramama mana Vasanaya deha imam Konka venka kutakana dakshina karanatakan deshan yadrachayopakata विचार Actually, Lord Rishabh Dev had no material body, but due to Yoga Maya, he considered his body material, and therefore, because he played like an ordinary human being. He gave up the mentality of identifying with it. Following this principle, he began to wander all over the world. While traveling, he came to the province of Karnataka, South India, and passed through Konka, Venka, and Kutaka. He had no plan to travel this way, but he arrived near Kutakachal and entered into a forest there. He placed stones within his mouth and began to wander through the forest, naked and with his hair disheveled like a madman. Text 8. Atha Samira Vega Vidhuta Vidhuta Vena Vikarshana Jatogra Davanala Stadvanam Ale Lihana Sahatena Dadaha Hare Krishna, my read, Prabhu? Yes, please. Thank you. Translation. While he was wandering about, a wild forest fire began. This fire was caused by the friction of bamboos, which were being blown by the wind. In that fire, the entire forest near Kutaka Kachala and the body of Lord Rishabdeva were burnt to ashes. Purport. Such a forest fire can burn the external bodies of animals, but Lord Rishabdeva was not burned, although he apparently seemed so. Lord Rishabdeva is the super soul of all living entities within the forest, and his soul is never burned by fire. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Adhayo Yam, Adha, Adhayo Yam, the soul is never burned by the fire. Due to Lord Harishabdeva's presence, all the animals in the forest were also liberated from the material engagement. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mm. So this is the potency of the Lord. This is very similar to what Lord Chaitanya also did when he was going towards Vrindavan. So he passed through the forest of Jharikhand. So you see, the Lord always does something which is very mysterious and very mystical. 
So Lord Chaitanya went into an impromptu kirtan. And this Sankirt, and then he did a, an impromptu Sankirtan, not with other human beings, but he did it with animals. All the animals, tiger, deer, wolves, everything came dancing. And they were all dancing with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the to Hare Krishna mantra. So Lord Shabdev also, he entered into the forest and there was a forest fire. And immediately they were all liberated from material engagement. Because he is the Supreme Lord. So he is transcendental. So anyone who comes in contact with him is also tran transcendental. So this is the cause. This is what we call causeless mercy, kripa siddha. Animal has no qualification to be liberated, but the Lord sometimes, you know, just like a rich man, sometimes out of his mercy, he just gives all some wealth, like you know, phenomenal wealth to a beggar. Just like that, the Lord sometimes, out of his own sweet will, sometimes gives liberation to even animals. Yeah, we continue. Text eight. राजोपिष्य कलाव अधर्म उत्कृष्य मणे भवित विमोहित नामो धर्म पथम अकुतो भयम अपहाय कुपथ पाखंडम पाखंडम असम जसम निज मनीषया मंद संप्रवर्त संप्रवर्तिष्यतेशन शुकदेव गोस्वामी कंटिन्यूड स्पीकिंग टू महाराज परीक्षित My dear king, the king of Konka, Venka, Kutaka, whose name was Arhat, heard of the activities of Rishabdev and imitating Rishabdev's principles, introduced a new system of religion. Taking advantage of Kali Yuga, the age of sinful activity, King Arhat, being bewildered, gave up the Vedic principles, which are free from risk, and concocted a new system of religion opposed to the Vedas. That was the beginning of Jain Dharma. Many other so-called religions followed this atheistic system. Positive. When Lord Sri Krishna was present on this planet, a person named Pondrapa imitated the four-handed Narayan and declared himself the supreme personality of Godhead. He desired to compete with Krishna. Similarly, during the time of Lord Rishabdev, the king of Konka and Venka act acted like a Paramhamsa and imitated Lord Rishabdev. He introduced a system of religion and took advantage of the fallen condition of the people in this age of Kali. It is said in Vedic literatures that people in this age will be more inclined to accept anyone as the Supreme Lord and accept any religion's religious system opposed to Vedic principles. The people in this age are described as Manda, Sumanda, Mataya. Generally, they have no spiritual culture and therefore they are very fallen. Due to this, they will accept any religious system. Due to their misfortune, they forget the Vedic principles. Following non-Vedic principles in this age, they think themselves the supreme lord and thus spread the cult of atheism all over the world. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hmm. Mandaha Subandha Mataya. So religion, in the mode of passion, is when a person understands religion to be irreligion and irreligion to be irreligion, and that's the misfortune of Kali Yuga. That people are so unintelligent, so overcome by rajoguna, that they cannot really understand what is real religion. So we see in the times of Shri Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Thakur also, Gaudiya Math. Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Thakur clearly said, he said like you know none of you is qualified to be an acharya. So you know you just cooperate with each other and you carry on the preaching as it is. 
But immediately on his disappearance, everyone wanted to be an Acharya within Gaudiya Math. So many Acharyas came and there were many Gaudiya Maths. Chaitanya Gaudiya Math, Narsingha Gaudiya Math, Radha Krishna Gaudiya Math. So they were like, all the Gaudiya Maths split into so many pieces and every the renunciate took one of his pieces. In this way, the whole movement eventually just disappeared. Today, Gaudiya Math is not at all famous. Like they exist in pockets but they really don't have much of a worthwhile existence. And they're certainly not into preaching in that sense. They're not into big preaching. They're just doing some small local effort. So that is the misfortune, that people forget the Vedic principles. That you have to act. So here this king, Arhat of Konka and Venka, he acted like a Paramahansa, imitating Lord Rishabdi. And so from there, Jainism started. Jainism, you see, if you see Jain Munis, they, they live naked. Digambar. They live naked. They, they they don't even use blades and all. They just pull out their hair if they have to cut. So that's a very weird thing. And and that has no purpose because Jains don't really know who's God. If there is no knowledge of God, what, where is the question of meditation? And what are we meditating on? Then this Vairagya, this renunciation becomes Phalgu. becomes a nonsense. Because there is no objective. So whether one is a renunciate or whether one is a Karmi, makes no difference if one doesn't know Krishna. Because the end objective is going to be the same. Service to one's own ahankar. And if there is only ahankar, then it doesn't matter what bodily designation one has. So therefore, as much as possible, one should avoid some kind, this kind of impersonal philosophies. One should avoid disobeying the acharyas. One should always follow strictly the instructions of the acharyas. And one should always study the shastras very carefully. So in ISKCON, we are very lucky that we have the best literature the best teaching and so many devotees. So please associate with devotees and discuss Krishna Katha on the basis of Srila Prabhupada's books. And then you will see the change in your own life. Hmm. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Prabhuji, this um, King Arhat, he hmm. he knew that uh, Lord Rishabdev is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Means uh, Rishabdev was behaving in a way which was like totally bewildering to everybody else. So, but this person could make out that he's the supreme personality. Hmm. See, he didn't know. Because nobody really knew except for his sons and some great sages that he is the Lord. Hmm. But he was fascinated why by Why would his... he imitate him? Hmm. Hmm. He was fascinated by his renunciation. Because Rishabdev, okay. as we saw, his form was very attractive. And of course, mm -hmm. he's a king, so we can understand that he has some degree of culture. So, you see, that's why it is said, you know, and in, so imitating Rishabdev's principles introduced a new system of religion. Uh, taking advantage of Kalyuga, the age of sinful activity, King Arhat, being bewildered, gave up the Vedic principles. So, obviously, he must be going through a lot of trouble performing a karma kand. And when he saw Rishabdev, he thought this as a cheap ticket to liberation. But immediately, because he was under Maya. He didn't know what was real religion. And therefore, he became bewildered. Mm. So, Avdhuta is, is, is an accepted form of renunciation in the Vedic culture. But then that has to be with in relation to the Supreme Lord's love. Not like just like someone just roams like a madman. Then one will become a madman. Mm. So, he just like took up renunciation without understanding the purpose for that renunciation. Yeah. Niyamagra, you know, just following the rules and regulations without understanding what is the purpose. Mm. So he did Niyamagra here. Mm. Okay, Prabhupada. Thank you. That means Arhat, did he share this with Jainism? It was before that, Jainism was not there. No, it wasn't there. So who was Arhat? He was, he must be. A Hindu king. King, yeah, he was a Hindu king. Yeah. And then subsequently, he is able to thank or something. Or, or, and did he? Yes. So I have seen in Karnataka, Mahabadipuram. Hmm. Huh. Huge statue there. Yeah. yeah. And people go there to worship and all that. Even I, yeah, I climbed it last year also. Yes, it's and the they huge, a very tough pious place for them. Huh. 
play of uh, material energy so and that is uh, even true like you were saying like uh, uh, when we are doing a particular uh, spiritual activity seemingly spiritual activity the externals will be there but uh, uh, if the intention is not clear if the purpose is not clear which is actually defined by the scriptures and the acharya then uh, we'll be uh, definitely uh, not reaching our destination so like so whatever uh, the pure devotional practices which have been recommended to us by our guru parampara that is chanting reading of scriptures if you do it in a very mechanical way or like in a not understanding that uh, this is actually uh, to increase my love and affection and attachment to krishna and it's just done for name sake we are actually uh, not understanding the value only so in small ways we are also like uh, this uh, duplicate rishabdevs and everything yeah. and and among the jains when i used to interact among my friends some of my friends were very staunch jainism they were uh, they were making some organization which would revolutionize because uh, they were very conscious that uh, their people uh, who are jains themselves are not following the injunctions so one time i was interacting and uh, he had a very high regard for our iskon but for them uh, i came to know from their belief that uh, the entire jainism starts from uh, the regard which they had is because they feel like okay you are following uh, the same god krishna who uh, we also follow him and i said where you never mentioned krishna so he says yeah we follow lord rishabdev who is uh, incarnation of narayan that's what they used to say so i was always getting uh, that uh, always question like what is the connection then with interactions with you and other devotees they used to say that was another uh, person who was a fake and who used to call rishaba so now in bhagavatam that clarity has come again <laughs> yes so actually uh, they still believe that uh, he is a original rishabdev hmm. but their their origin is the original rishabdev which they don't know about uh, there is a discrepancy in that yeah but they also have some very strong opinions regarding krishna they have a map most of the staunch jainism people they have their map of the lineage so he showed hmm. me the entire map of the lineage who hmm. the forefathers traced back around uh, many centuries back like how they are connected hmm. to rishabdev yeah so but then that is it like yeah that would definitely hurt their sentiments mm-hmm. so but definitely uh, we may not go to jains and preach so definitely we may not directly hurt their sentiments that is also there yeah but we should know the facts so what is there nice but uh, yeah but these people who all this jainism people and buddhist people jain monks and the buddhist monk uh, it's a uh, it's a miracle thing to see that uh, they have built uh, big big temples for their worshipful lords hmm. yeah, is it like uh, whatever little they have followed very strictly that also empowers them 
with uh, something like that they can make such big monuments which really requires lot of intelligence and everything <laughs> no it's just a material coincidence you know there is this uh, branch of logic like you know which talks about different way we talk or kutti nyay so there is one nyay known as ajagalastan nyay you know depends on the back of a goat's neck so there are some kind of material protuberances fleshy protuberances which look like nipples if one tries to extract no milk will come from a goat so it's exactly like that so this religion has no connection with the vedas so one may construct the great grandest of temples but because there is no authority there is like no lineage to the lord this will have no effect you will go there to feel pious just like hindus go to temples to feel pious so many people come to iskon to feel pious so that's how that's how also they go because then they'll commit all kinds of horrendous activities so that's how it is so this have no significance the only truth in this material world is the hari na name of krishna everything else is just an illusion truly said prabhu so that Uh, that also means that when we are also under protection of our sanatan dharma if uh, we are doing just a name sake activity not mm. understanding the purpose mm. so we also are actually a part of religion only then yes just another ism hinduism jainism islamism this also then this becomes krishnaism if we don't take it seriously because there is a slight difference like uh, one has uh, not the sufficient pious deeds or uh, not having the capacity to take up seriously and another is uh, to deliberately becoming uh, um, what is a um, ca- casual deliberately becoming uh, casual and not being serious in krishna consciousness so that also is a like uh, not a very good sign Isn't it? Yeah, unless we have a strong realization of Krishna, we are not devotees. We are sadhakas. We are we are understanding. We don't have a realization of Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Prabhu ji, does does this King Arhat? Um... call or consider rishab dev as his guru or something or is just some random uh, imitation without even giving him any credit no it is because that's how that's how they have uh, lord rishab dev as a tirthankar but uh, that was an imitation because lord rishab dev never initiated anyone he never preached so he just imitated him accepted him as a guru even hmm. though even though rishab dev accepted him as a disciple So he just accepted Rishab Dev as a guru and started concocting his own methods. Hmm. And was Rishab Dev um, uh, hmm. aware of this? No, no. I mean, as Paramatma, he is aware of everything. Huh. Otherwise, he was not. Hmm. <laughs> okay, Prabhu. Okay. Okay. Can you understand that only uh, person who is very sincere and serious uh, will get the correct path, and uh, others may always get a uh, uh, misleading path because yes, all these things have... like uh, Lord Buddha coming and uh, misleading the people, then uh, this incidents of the fake Rishab Dev uh, hmm. showing some pseudo religion. Because even hmm. Buddhism also, although uh, it is uh, by uh, Lord Buddha himself, but it is not. Uh, it is a religion only, as I have heard from uh, some places where Popa says. Hmm. So that is not considered as a proper religion, Buddhism. At least it is not considered in par with even Christianity and uh, Islam also. No, so, it's not. Although it is, uh, uh, it was. propagated by lord buddha himself whom we consider as one of the incarnations so yeah. how to understand it like how do we understand 
Why only Buddha? The, person, the, the personality is correct, but the teachings are incorrect and uh, the following is wrong. Yeah. The, the Dattatre, Lord Dattatre is also same. We don't follow his teachings also. We we respect him, but we don't follow him. Yeshan Prabhu would say. <laughs> so we don't, we don't follow their teachings. So there are many examples and the reason is, there is a specific reason, you know. The teacher will punish some child. And he will say, okay, go and stand in the corner. That doesn't mean that even a good student will go to the corner and stand there. So, like the teacher will say, okay, tell her, come here and tell a naughty boy to go and stand in the corner of the class. But that doesn't mean that all the boys will go and stand in the corner. Only the you know those who are mischievous. So, in the, so just like that, uh, sometimes when the society is too atheistic, too corrupted and too violent or anything, the incarnation of the Lord would come and give a teaching which would curb their you know, mischievous activities. Such instructions are not for ordinary people. So for ordinary people, Lord incarnates and then he gives instructions. Paritranaya sadhana vinashaya chadushkatam dharma sanstapna arthaya So he establishes religious principles but sometimes he does not. He does something else which is not meant to be emulated. Okay. So we stop Thank here today. Okay. Okay. We stop here today then. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada. Jai. Thank you. 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 Thank